They sold out Australia. They sold out Australia. Traitors among us. They'll know who I'm talking about. I'm pretty nervous. I have no doubt they knew what they were doing. So what should Australia do? They let down their country, absolutely. Coming up on 60 Minutes, how fierce is the intelligence war being waged? It's a threat to our very way of life. Our top spies, blunt warning about the country's greatest enemies. Foreign interference against the political system happens at all levels of government and targets all parties in this country. It might be endearing, but our laid-back attitude is increasingly putting us all at risk. If you live your life thinking she'll be right, you're wrong. That's the sobering assessment of our top spy, ASIO's Mike Burgess. Tonight, he reveals his greatest fear for the country, that our security is not secure. He says more Australians are being targeted for espionage and foreign interference than ever before. To prove his point, a few days ago, Burgess made the startling admission a former politician had sold Australia out after being recruited by a foreign power. The ASIO boss warns we must smarten up our ways or else. Terrorists and spies don't do business as usual. There are constant shifts in threat, intent, tactics, capabilities and technologies. You don't become the country's chief spy unless you're good at keeping secrets. But ASIO boss Mike Burgess is so worried about those seeking to harm the nation's security he wants to warn every Australian. They were met by individuals claiming to be bureaucrats. In reality, they were spies in disguise. In his annual threat assessment last Wednesday, he didn't hold back, detailing how foreign countries are targeting Australia. Australians need to know the threat is real, the threat is now, and the threat is deeper and broader than you might think. His speech included revelations that one country had a specialist espionage unit he called the A-Team aimed at recruiting Australians to their ranks, and that they'd even cultivated a former politician to their cause. This politician sold out their country, party, former colleagues to advance the interests of a foreign regime. Burgess's remarks caused an instant controversy. He needs to disclose who it was. It's just as simple as that. If someone has been a traitor, I can't think of a more significant issue when it comes to national security. Questions around the identity of the politician made headlines. Mike Burgess in one. But for Mike Burgess, that's just one of a multitude of issues he's dealing with if he's to do his job properly and protect Australia. Director General, is Australia at war and we just don't know it? I wouldn't characterise Australia at war, but ASIO is certainly in a battle with adversaries and targets and representing threats to security to this country. You've described this battle as feeling like hand-to-hand -hand combat. What do you mean? Well, we're busier than we've ever been and we face a deadly dilemma. The threat environment suggests we have to put more resources against espionage and foreign interference because they have surpassed terrorism as our nation's principal security concern. Espionage and foreign interference undermines our sovereignty, attacks our democracy. It truly is a threat to our way of life. Last October in America, for the first time, you publicly called out the Chinese government's intelligence services. Why did you do so? There is one country in particular, my remarks stand, that has been engaged in wholesale intellectual property theft at a scale unprecedented in human history. That was worthy of me calling out. You called out China in the United States. In Australia just days ago, you've described the A-team. You won't put a country to that, but the mm. A-team, this foreign spy service, its activities as you've described them align almost 100% with the spying activities of China's Ministry of State Security. Why not call out the MSS here in Australia? The reason why I call out these examples is to raise awareness so Australians are alert, they know what suspicious behaviour looks like and they report it because that improves our defences. The countries you're speculating it is, there are multiple countries that conduct this type of information operations and espionage operations every day not just one. That may well be the case, and I appreciate you saying I'm speculating when I name China, but it is an incontrovertible fact that Chinese intelligence services are the busiest they've ever been in Australia, doing more spying and foreign interference than any other service. So why be half pregnant? Why not simply call them out? Sure. Well, I probably don't agree with your statement there. Um, 
It's a complex, challenging and changing security environment. The world is complex. It's not just one country. Does it risk emboldening Beijing? Sure. Well, I'm not going to comment on which country it might be, so I can see what you're doing there, Nick. But in terms of not calling out a country, I don't think me not mentioning their name emboldens them. They know who they are, I can assure you of that, and we've had this conversation with them. You described an ex-politician who you say sold out Australia, was cultivated by the A-team, uh, even proposed at one time introducing a relative of a Prime Minister unnamed uh, to the A-team. Did this ex-politician know that he was being tasked, run by a foreign intelligence service? I have no doubt they knew what they were doing. Why haven't they been charged? So this was a case that happened before espionage and foreign interference legislation was in place. Well, respectfully, we've had espionage laws on the books since 1914 mm -hmm. in Australia. Could we not have used those dated laws to hold this person to account? Well, this is slightly different than what espionage laws. This is not access to classified information. This is the clandestine deceptive actions of a nation state and an individual supporting them that puts people in a way they can be recruited that allows information to be extracted. So, no. The good thing, though, is that behaviour was stopped, that harm is reduced. This person will not be doing anything again. Do you describe this person as a traitor? They let down their country, absolutely. It makes them a traitor? Oh, I, I, give me the legal definition of that, but uh, yes. They sold out Australia? They sold out Australia. How can you be so sure they won't do it again? Well, that's our job as Australia's security service. Of course, when we close the case, we'll make judgments that we think the threat's mitigated. Is it not a fair cop for some Australians to be saying, well, hang on, this guy sold out his country, he's worked with the foreign spy service, most likely be China, but leave that aside, and yet no real tangible punishment? Well, the law's the law, and in this case, that's a reality. The key thing is the harm has been dealt with. The outing of this, this nameless traitor has sparked this fierce guessing game in Canberra, perhaps predictable. Ex-US Ambassador Joe Hockey has urged you to out the traitor to name names. What's your response to this immediate politicisation of your speech? So I'm aware of Mr Hockey's comments. I don't agree with him, but he's entitled to his opinion. Foreign interference against the political system happens at all levels of government and targets all parties in this country. Individuals who call out names, if they're doing that for political purposes, I suggest they be very careful because it might come back on their own party. Five years of annual threat assessment speeches, your rhetoric has increased each year. But six years after new espionage and foreign interference laws were passed in this nation, there's one bloke in jail. If it's so bad, why aren't more people in the clink? ASIO can't arrest and charge anyone. Of course, prosecutions are welcome. The laws are put in place, and that is one way you can deal with it, but there are many other ways you can deal with it. We can flash the ASIO identity card and interview people to let them know we know who you are, we know what you're up to, and you will not have free reign here. Our job is best done in private. While Burgess insists ASIO does its best work discreetly, he wants us to know that action is being taken against foreign operatives. I can tell you there are dozens of people, undeclared foreign intelligence services, uh, have been removed from this country since I've been Director General. We're pretty proud of that. And again, we do that quietly with no fanfare because the key thing is they're put on notice and they're removed and the harm is stopped. The challenge he faces is for every spy expelled on his advice another takes its place, and the danger for Australians increases. You've spoken about Australians being tracked, harassed, intimidated by foreign spies. What are you seeing? More recently, we've seen a foreign intelligence service use a puppet to find out about a person and ask again, can we find a fellow Australian who will make that dissident disappear? Make an Australian disappear, you mean an assassination? Well, the words were make them disappear, but yes, that could be one of the possibilities, but obviously that was stopped before it could happen. Have any dissidents actually been physically harmed in this country? I won't comment on those activities. Have they been uh, uh, threatened or their family threatened abroad? Definitely. We see people threatening abroad, and worse still, we see people who are actually have their families threatened abroad. Well, if you don't come home, something will happen to your family members. If these Australians are brave enough to call out foreign regimes, and, and again, I'll name one, China, for its oppressive conduct. When is the state, when are you, when are our senior officials going to do the same here in Australia? 
you'd have to ask others, not not just me in that regard. Well, you are the Director General of Security, though. Well, my job isn't to call them out specifically, and my job is first and foremost to deal with the problem. So when we find those problems, we'll assess what we're dealing with, and if we see threats to security, the safety of um, those individuals is paramount, and we'll deal with them quickly. Director General, thank you for your time. Thank you, Nick. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.